Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under, because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high, cause we're Catholics. Fight the good fight with the truth, stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ, I'm in love with the truth. Love God, save souls, slay error. Go stronger, go stronger, go stronger, Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. It's Friday, a day of penance. Big time, right? You heard about the... Um, the exorcist telling us on this day we should be doing some prayer and fasting, especially for Holy Mother of the Church, for all the craziness that's going on. I'm being honest with you. I mean, let's, you don't have to have your eyes open to see it. Uh, it's, it's pretty obvious. And Mary, four exorcists uh, gave us the advice that um, we should be using today's date as a day of real, truly uh, a penitential day. Yes. Now, every Friday is a day of penance. Every Friday is. Yeah. Right. Now, Mary's filling in for Jesse uh, on Friday. <laughs> I usually have Matt Arnold or our Father Murr, but I can always count on my wife. She's, she's, she kind of lives close by, like in the same house. <laughs> <laughs> and later, we're going to invite you into our living room because we're going to be talking about a book. My wife and I talk about books all of the uh, time, and we're going to finish up with uh, Cardinal uh, Robert Cardinal Sarah. The day is now far spent on the crisis in the church and what his take is. But before we do that, Mary, uh, we are going to what we call give the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And we always quote uh, the saints about that ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. And so for today's gospel reading at Holy Mass, taken from Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 31. uh, Mary, will you read that gospel for us, please? Okay. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying, Son of David, have pity on us. Mm -hmm. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the word of him through all the land. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is there. He's walking along and these blind men are following him. And what do they call him? Son of David, have pity on us. Well, the Messiah was supposed to come from David's line. And the king that would rule Israel forever was to come from David's line. So they're acknowledging him as Messiah and the true king of Israel. And what have pity on us? What well they're blind. They'd like to be able to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what does Jesus ask them? Do you have faith that I can do this? And you know, that's the question Jesus can ask us. Do you have Today. faith? Yeah. Do you have faith that I can do you have faith that I can fix the problems in the church? Absolutely. Do you have faith that I can fix the problems in your life? Yep. In your family, in your in Good your point. world, in your country? Yep. Or or do you think that you have to take it all into hand and you have to be the ones, you know, man is his own savior. I got to pull myself up by my bootstraps. You know, God helps those who help themselves. Or or do we really have faith that God is big enough to take care of the problems? No, those are great points. And that's how it is applied to us. I think one of the reasons we are floundering in the church today is because of lack of faith. And one thing I've asked people to do for 40 years since it was taught to me is ask Jesus Christ for more faith each day of my life. Yeah, every day. Lord, I believe in you. Increase my faith. And that's, you know, the acts of faith, hope, and charity. Mm -hmm. You learned them as a child. And pray them every day. My God, I believe. You know, and faith is a gift, by the way. Yeah, it's a gift. You can't merit it. God gives it to you. In baptism, faith was freely given to us. And that's clear from the scriptures. But... You know what? You can lose a gift and you can lose faith. And it's not once saved, always saved. Once I believe, always. No, Paul said, pray for me that after having preached to others, I myself may not fall away. Mm. I wor- work out your salvation in fear mm. and trembling. It's a gift that can be lost. And the exercise of faith is prayer. If you really believe Mm -hmm. that God is the one who has the answer to the problems, you pray. You get down on your knees and beg him for the help you need. 
And yesterday I had so many people contact me about what we said about Fulton Sheen's Daily Holy Hour. Yeah. And saying that that's what revised their faith there in you, Jesus. Absolutely. I mean, if Jesus is really present in the Blessed Sacrament, do we act like we believe it? Yeah. And Bishop Sheen once said, he said, if you do not live as you believe, if we don't live as if we believe that Jesus is really present in the most blessed sacrament, then we're going to be condemned to believing as we live. Yep, makes sense. If, if we take the Eucharist lightly, if we go into church and pretend like it's just a meeting hall and, you know, we're talking and chatting and we're ignoring Jesus who's really there, body, blood, soul, and divinity, as he is present in heaven, he is present in the tabernacle, under the species, it's an appearance of bread. It's not bread. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus isn't present in the bread and the wine. As some of those songs have been sung in Catholic churches. Exactly. Wrong. Wrong. That's consubstantiation. It's a with. doctrine that it means with. He's present with the bread and the wine. That was condemned at the Council of Trent as a heresy. We don't believe that Jesus is present in the bread and the wine. We believe that the substance of the bread and the wine are changed into the body, blood, soul, and divinity, is risen, ascended, glorified body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Mass. And, of course, only Christ can do this. That's why when the priest says the consecration, he says, this is my body, because Jesus is acting in and through the priest to, Christi. to work this miracle. You want a miracle? Yep. Go to Mass every day. Hey, hey, Mary, when you said you want a miracle, I was just talking to some friends, a priest friend last night, and saying people are going to these you know, apparition sites, and you know these aren't been approved. And I said, you know, Father, what I always told him for years was, you want a miracle? Go to Mass. Go to Mass. Amen. And And by the way, today... Is First Friday. That's right. I know at Sacred Heart Parish here in Covina, they will have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament all day until 515. People get up and go. Go mm -hmm. and spend time with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Do I believe that I need to act like I believe? I need to get down on my knees before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and acknowledge that it's really him. And I need to pray. And then it's interesting. Jesus healed them according to their faith. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And According to their, their faith. faith. So if you want more faith, ask for it every day. Exactly. And then it, what's really interesting is here these men are blind, right? Everybody in the community knew they were blind. And he says, see to it that you tell no one. Well, how am I not supposed to tell anyone? <laughs> if I've been blind all my life, and I start walking around and I'm not blind yeah, anymore. Everybody knows uh, that. No, I, I guess I don't have to tell anybody. They're going to see, see it, it. right? Yeah. But the point was, it's, it's, it's this messianic secret. Jesus knew that people had the wrong idea about who the Messiah was and what he was supposed to do. Yeah, they acknowledge him as the son of David, the true king of Israel, but they expect him to establish a worldly kingdom. And so he has to free them from that idea yep. before he fully reveals and he slowly reveals his Messiahship by the miracles he works. He knows who he is. Absolutely. Mary, just for those who don't know about your show on Virgin Most Powerful called the Bible with the Barbers. You've got a, a master's degree in biblical studies from John Paul II, a theology degree from USF. Now that the kids have grown up, you now are doing Bible studies, a couple Bible studies a week. And on Tuesdays here, we have once a week, it follows the Terry and Jesse show, the Bible with the Barbers. So if you want to get some good uh, Bible teachings, I think I would encourage you to join us on Tuesdays or go to the podcast on Absolutely. Virgin podcast. Most Powerful. Mary, I want to just mention a good news story because, you know, I have bad news to give, but I have good news. Guess what I start with? The good <laughs> the news. Good news. <laughs> 40 Days for Life, since they started in 2007, they've recorded over 16,000 babies have been saved Praise at God. the abortion clinics Praise God. because they're praying at the clinics. Right. I just think that is such a good news story. We know a friend of ours who's through re relative through marriage, Father Peter Irving at Holy Innocence in Long Beach. They've now saved 1,800 babies in about 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Just one parish. Yeah, one parish. Yeah. Because they are active at the clinic there. Yeah. And the parish is raising money to pay for expenses for, you know, the babies and mom. And exactly. it's just amazing what can be done with yeah. the, with prayer and action. Exactly. You notice I didn't say action and prayer? No, prayer and prayer action. action. <laughs> That's a good news story. Now, I hate to give you some bad news, but it's, see, we, and I'm going to get to Bishop Sheen in a second about his statement, but the Chinese communists have approved, uh, you know, this, this bishop, it's, they call it the state-run patriotic church, uh, he said this, love for the homeland must be greater than love for the church. 
That is so sad because we made this deal with the communists and we're just getting the raw end of the deal. These faithful Chinese Catholics are going underground because they don't want to join atheistic communist church. Right, right. And the, the reality is that's not true patriotism. True patriotism doesn't put your country before God. God is first. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. God must be first in our life, in each one of our individual lives, and in our country life. God must be first. And so this idea, and of course, in, in communist circumstances, we know that communism, this communist state sets itself up as God. And Absolutely. That's just a lie. The, the state doesn't replace God. No. Nope. can't. Oh, you're right. And when we come back, we're going to give some more news about uh, someone who signed. We had 150,000 signed petitions for a high school girl who just said something. She wanted to support something that had common sense in it. When you when we come back, I'll tell you what that was. <laughs> I was one of the signers of that. I, I signed that because it just made too much sense. But it shows you where the world is going. Hey, by the way, I just want to thank all of you. It's the end of the year. If you want to make a one time donation, for Virgin Most Powerful, as we grow, uh, you can call me at 661-972-7872. That's my cell number. I get lots of texts and questions on the faith. I'm happy to answer those. Or you can go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. You can also ask questions there. My wife is usually the one who answers most of the questions. Or if you want to make a, a donation online, become a monthly donor. We'd love to have monthly donors. That's how we pay our monthly bills. Or call us at 877-526-215. When we come back, I'm going to tell you about 150,000 people signing a petition that I wouldn't even think it was possible when I was in high school it would happen. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Mary Danielle is filling in for Jesse. She's got the Bible with the Barber show on Tuesdays. And I love when she pinch hits. And later in the show, we're going to talk about Cardinal Seurat's book. Don't turn that down. Get yourself a cup of coffee. We'll be right back. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Jesse Romero. Join me on a pilgrimage of faith and discovery to Poland for the 100th year anniversary of the birth of St. John Paul II in May of 2020. Together we'll experience the faith, beauty, and culture of Poland and become imbibed with the spirit of John Paul II. We'll visit the town of Wadowice, where John Paul was born, and the city of Krakow, where he was ordained and later became bishop. We'll also travel to Jasnogora and visit Our Lady of Czestochowa, and we'll have a chance to venerate the original image of the merciful Jesus at St. Faustina's convent and the city that St. Maximilian Kolbe built for the Immaculata. Finally, we'll pay a visit to Auschwitz, where St. Maximilian Kolbe was martyred. This is the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to worship and discover your own faith at places where St. John Paul II grew in his own love for our Lord. For more information or how to join this pilgrimage, visit my website at jesseromero.com. Genesis 1.27 says, God created man in his own image. Male and female he created them. According to Pope St. John XXIII, it is not true that some human beings are by nature superior and others inferior. All human beings are equal in their natural dignity. May God help us to look upon everyone as a person created in his image and likeness and treat everyone the same without favoritism or prejudice. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. <laughs> Actually, it's not Jesse. It's Terry Barber and Mary Barber. She's filling in. Jess is on his way to Northern California. Or no, Oregon for a men's conference. Awesome. Hey, before I talk about these 150,000 people that signed a petition, uh, I wanted to mention last night I watched Raymond Arroyo on EWTN, and one of the relatives of Fulton Sheen uh, was obviously dis- very disappointed about the postponement of the beatification. She said that she'd like to ask everybody to offer a mass on the 9th of of uh, December. That's the 40th anniversary of his death. Yeah. To pray for this cause. Yeah. And I thought that was really brilliant. Beautiful. I mean, not just beautiful, but brilliant and beautiful. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Because the Mass is the greatest prayer we have. Right. So I would encourage you if you can offer your Mass on the 9th for Fulton Sheen's cause, I would appreciate that too. Mary Danielle, 150,000 people signed a petition for a high school girl who wants to keep, all right, unreasonable. She wants to keep girls' sports for girls only. What? Uh, un- what? Unbelievable. What? When we were in school, if someone would have said that, Mary. Girls' what? sports for girls only? We'd have said, what are you, nuts? Why would you not even have to sign that? That's how crazy the world has gotten. And she's getting uh, a, a, a good a good amount of uh, a soci- uh, ad- advertisement about this. And with their good. schools thinking that maybe maybe we shouldn't let boys participate in girls' sports. And, I, you know, common sense ain't that common. Now, my next story, I, I hate to say this, but it just goes, these two stories are sad. One of them, and this is right out of the National Catholic Register, and I, I read it out of several other sources because I couldn't believe it. But this is why we need to be praying for a holy mother at the church. The devil loves this. And I would say the church is being purified right now, Mary. Yeah. Here's the story. Investors for Peter's Pence, you know, the money we give to the Holy Father each year. They're supposed to be given to the poor. Yeah, the Pence. It's for right. the poor. Every year. The poorest of the poor. They're supposed to, who it's supposed to go to. Right. According to this Italian newspaper, uh, the investments, they actually, a million dollars went to fund, are uh, you ready? Elton John's uh, movie, The Cosmic, you know, what? Are, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I should give you the exact Rocket uh, Man. Rocket Man. Uh, 3.6 million is uh, what they needed. And the Vatican put a million dollars into the movie Rocket Man. And I, I say that because it hurts me to have to say that. But what it does, Mary, is it makes me want to pray harder for our leadership in our church because we've become too secular. Right. I mean, maybe maybe the return financially was good, but this was an immoral, it was all about homo, the, you know, about promoting homosexual lifestyle. And that's contrary wrong. to what we it's teach, contrary to what Christ, you know, it's interesting. People say, oh, well, the church said this and the church. No, God gave the owner's manual. Yeah. God made man male and female in the beginning, mm-hmm. only male and female. Right. He didn't make a confusion. Sin is what causes the confusion. Yeah. And when we sin, we actually degrade ourselves. God doesn't gain anything from us becoming holy and getting to heaven. Right. It doesn't add to his glory. But it, it lets us share in his glory. So if we reject God and we reject his commandments, right. then we don't share in his glory. And the one who suffers, we gain or we lose. God doesn't gain or lose anything. So it's all for us. And God gave us the commandments. He tells us how we have to live in order to be happy. Yeah. So trying to live a lie, trying to say, well, I'm, I'm, if I would try to say I'm a man, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. I was made a woman. Rejoice in my femininity. Right. Terry's a man. That's the way God made him. And and to to not accept that is to rebel against God. And I understand there are sins that people commit against little children, unfortunately, sometimes even little babies that cause confusion in them so that they don't know who they are. They don't know if they're male or female because of the trauma and and the degradation that they have suffered from. But it's not going to make you happy to pursue that degradation. We have to renounce the degradation and turn to God and say, Lord, help me to appreciate who I am, who you made me to be. Well said, Mary. And this next story, I just want to continue to pray for our leaders in the sense of our country leaders, whether it's President Trump, the Speaker of the House, uh, Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, because here's what happened. Senators, representatives. Senators, all of them we need to pray. That's what St. Paul talked about. We need to exactly. pray for those who are raised up to, yep. to rule over you. Yep, yep. Well, the U.S. House of Representatives explained this. Uh, they she were talking in a press conference, and a, a um, newscaster asked Nancy Pelosi, do you hate President Trump? I think it was because they're you know going through the process of impeachment. And she, was, she resented that statement. She said, as a Catholic, I, uh, you know, I, I don't hate anyone. 
I pray for President Trump. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you know, she she claimed that uh, don't ever put that on me. And I just thought out loud because I do pray for her. And one of the things that I pray for her is that she sees that what she's saying makes no sense objectively. When she says she hates no one, she continually votes for the killing of unborn babies, even when they're born alive. And yeah. so how could you not hate someone when you say, you don't, I don't hate anybody and you're voting to kill these little babies that's the worst kind of hate to take the life of these children by your legislation. So I would just ask her humbly that what your statement about you, you were taught to love will love the littlest of the ones which are the babies. Right. And, and love doesn't, you know, <laughs> love does what's the good for the for the well, for, St. Thomas says love is willing the good of the other, the other. And to to kill little babies in a mother's womb, number one, you're not only hating the baby, yeah. you're hating the mother. Exactly. Okay. Abortion is a trauma. Mm-hmm. It's a trauma. It's, 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 <laughs> it's all almost always fatal for at least one person, sometimes more than one. Many women die from your safe and legal abortions every year. Mm-hmm. But Nancy Pelosi, I, you know, with all due respect, if you don't hate, then why do you promote abortion? And in addition to that, if you don't hate the president, then why are you continuously allowing yourself to operate on the basis of absolute falsehoods? Yeah. We already know that there, you know, there, there was, there's no impeachable offense. It's already been proven that everything the Democrats have said that they want to impeach him on is false. It's a lie. If you don't hate someone, why are you lying about them? Yeah. And so your actions do not support what your words are saying. And you say you're Catholic but if you're Catholic, that means you support and believe and follow all the teachings of the church. And the teaching of the church is absolutely clear that you never, ever, for any reason, under any circumstances, have the right to take the life of an innocent human being deliberately. And, and you know, Mary, you made a well statement. But if you read the policies, what we call the platform of the Democratic Party and platform. Republic, Republican platforms, Parties. then you understand their policies so don't listen to someone say, oh, well, this person is not for abortion. Read the platform of their party. And that's why I encourage people to go to Priest for Life, because Father Frank Pavone does a really good job educating Catholics on that. And just on that, there are some politicians who have tried to, they were Democrat, and they tried to stay in the Democratic Party and be pro-life. Yeah. And they're, they're being squeezed out and of persecuted. Course, of course. Any, no any Democrat who speaks for life gets persecuted by other That's Democrats. Right. That's right. That's just the facts. Hey, mm-hmm. let's bring the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> oh, Sheen ahead. I love it. Mary, <laughs> yesterday we actually had Bishop Sheen speak for himself. Awesome. And if people missed it, you got to hear it. Go to the podcast yeah. at virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Today, Bishop Sheen is talking on something. It's appropriate for a Friday. Yes, it is. Suffering, right? Suffering. Pain. Yeah. Bishop Sheen says pain in itself is not unbearable. It is the failure to understand its meaning that is unbearable. Mary, you know, we can talk about Colossians chapter 1. And we've talked to so many Protestant ministers over the 40 years that you and I have been, well, 30 years of marriage, but I've been doing this 40 years with Protestants. Can you, do you recall Dr. Hahn uh, talking about redemptive suffering, how that, he never really thought about that until he became a Catholic. Do you recall that? Not really? Not really. Because what I do is I remember him saying, when I read Colossians chapter 1, I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. And, and as a Catholic, we can unite our suffering with the sufferings of Christ to help redeem the world. So every action is like a blank check. Right. If Christ's name is on it, it has infinite value. So here it is, First Friday. Yep. What do we do on First Friday? Sacrifice! Read the passion of Christ in the gospel. Go through that passion. Yeah. Look at what Jesus Christ did for you. And Mary, I always say this. I just see Matt Arnold pulling in for his next show out here. I'm waving to him. Okay. Matt, I would say this, and he would say the same thing on Fridays. Read the passion narrative yeah. and ask yourself, what can I do to unite my suffering with the sufferings of Christ to help redeem the world. So this is first Friday. This is the Friday that the exorcists have told us to fast, do some penance, go visit a sick person, 
do some apostolic work and make a sacrifice because Holy Mother the Church is in desperate need of lay people. This isn't the time to run, is it? No, it's not the time to run. It's the time to get down on our knees Amen. And, tell, and admit that we are in a situation we need God's help. And Jesus is there in the Blessed Sacrament also. Go and make visits to Jesus. And in many parishes today, there will be exposition of the Blessed Sacrament for adoration. So go and spend time with our Lord in adoration. We can't have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament without people being in the church. Well said. So come and be there. Be there. Well said. Now we're going to shift gears to uh, Robert Cardinal Seurat's book, The Day is Now Far Spent. This is from Ignatius Press. I've spent weeks, and I'm going to invite you into the barber's living room right now, folks, because this is what we do at night. While she's answering questions on the computer, I'm, I'm going to describe it. Can you picture me sitting in a chair next to my wife? She's answering questions from people calling in and asking questions uh, through, the, through the Internet. And then I'm saying, honey, look what Cardinal Siraj just said about X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So I thought, well, why don't we have you come into our living room, have a cup of coffee, some tea, And let's talk about this great book, The Day is Now Far Spent. The topic right now is about the crisis in the church. And I thought, wow, this cardinal really nails it, um, my Jesse. Mary, (laughs) I keep saying Jesse. I do that to Matt when he's on Fridays with me. I I can't get get it straight. (laughs) One, One of the things he said on page 79 regarding the crisis in the church, he says, one of the great problems of Christianity in today's world is that it does not think any more of the future of God. The present of this world alone seems sufficient. Now, I'm going to go on, but in other words, if I got food on the table, hmm. if I got, you know, I get to go to my sports games, I got a job, uh, why should I think about God? Why should I think about my soul when I'm so comfortable? And that really distracts us from the meaning and purpose of life. That's my take on that, Mary. Yeah. He says the the present of this world alone seems sufficient. Whoa. He says, we want to have only this world, to live only in this world. So we close the door to the greatness of our existence. Can you imagine that, Mary? And, the, and the, what is the greatness of our existence? What is it? We were made by God for union with God. Amen. We have no finality in this world. Our finality is union with God in heaven, which, by the way, can begin right here on earth. That's what we're striving to do is live in union with God right here on earth. And, and so if, if we limit ourselves yes. to this world, this world is a material world. It's passing away. The world as we know it is passing away. Right. It's, we're all going to die someday. You think? And, and the world is going to come to an end someday also. Yeah. It's only God who is eternal, and it's only union with God that will give us joy for all eternity. Well said, when we come back, we're going to talk about that next world meaning about celibacy. What does Cardinal, uh, Robert Cardinal Seurat have to say about celibacy in the priesthood? Wow, he knocked the ball out of the park. Hey, if you need more coffee, one of my kids will get you another cup of coffee. <laughs> hey, you need tea? Tell me you need tea. Sit down. We're going to talk more about this wonderful book, The Day is Now Far Spent, on Virgin Most Powerful Radio here at the uh, Terry and Jesse Show. Go turn that down. We'll be right back. Welcome to our January 11, 2020 Spiritual Warfare Conference. Every year without fail, this is our most popular, well-attended event. This year's Spiritual Warfare Conference will host Adam Bly, a Catholic demonologist, and an auxiliary member of the International Association of Exorcists, along with Dr. Luis Sandoval, a psychiatrist who's part of the Healing, Deliverance, and Exorcism team for the Diocese of Orange. These two gentlemen bring tons of experience and expertise in the area of spiritual warfare. This is going to be a high-information Catholic seminar. I'll be there as well, sharing some riveting stories on the diabolical and liberation found through Jesus Christ from my best-selling book, The Devil in the City of Angels. Mark your calendars, come and join us, and meet other radio hosts from Jesus 911. Contrary to popular belief, spiritual warfare is not demon-centered. It's Christ-centered. Come join us and learn how to armor up and fight the good fight of faith. Catholics, wake up. Don't hit the snooze button. Join us at St. Christopher Catholic Church, 629 South Glendora Avenue, West Covina, California, on January 11, 2020. See you then. Strength and honor in Jesus' name. 
This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871. Because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. <laughs> Actually, it's Terry and Mary. Jesse's on the road. I'll be on the road t- tomorrow morning to Detroit, Michigan. And, uh, you know, by the way, if you'd like me to come and talk about Fulton Sheen, I can say full Sheen ahead, I'd love to come to your parish. I'm going to Christ the King next week in, uh, in Orange County to give a talk on Fulton Sheen. Good. So uh, I'd like to promote him more and more, especially now that the cause has been delayed. Mary, we're talking about Car- uh, Robert Cardinal Seurat's book, The Day Is Now Far Spent. If you just joined us, I think there's some more space in my living room to have a seat here. Yeah, uh, we'll get you some, something to drink. And um, we're talking about this book. This is what my wife and I do many times at night, talking about great Catholic books and to inspire us to fall deeper in love with Jesus and his church. But one thing uh, we're talking about, the, the, the crisis in the church Cardinal Seurat says the meaning of celibacy as an anticipation of the future is to open the doors and to make the world greater, to show the reality of the future that should be lived by us already present. Living then is a testimony of faith. We truly believe that God exists, that God enters into my life, and that I can found my life on Christ on the future life. That's what celibacy is about. I don't know if people have heard that because what I've been hearing, Mary, is that celibacy is a problem. Why don't we just let our priests get married? And, and the reality is, is that it, it, they call it an eschatological sign, that meaning that it points toward heaven. Amen. To the end, which is heaven. But that's, our, that's supposed to be our end. That's what God made us yep. for. And, but the deal is, is Jesus said there's no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven that they, you will live like the angels. The angels don't have bodies. They don't get married. No. They can't reproduce themselves. And so the, the, the marriage is for this world. And the, the point of marriage was to show forth the inner life of the Trinity, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in this love relationship yep. that's not only loving but life-giving. Yep. And so human marriage was made by God to be an image of his own inner Trinitarian life. Well, in heaven, we're all going to be taken up in the Trinity. We're not going to become God, but God will fill us completely, and we will know him completely, and we will be completely known by him, and there will be this union. And so there's, there's no more need for marriage. And and so there's no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven. And so the celibate priesthood, the religious life, the sisters who make vows and give themselves to Christ, the lay brothers who make vows and give themselves totally to Christ in the service of the church. Yeah, that this is what this is a sign of. Do we understand? Do we really believe, though, again, that we have a finality beyond this world? Do we believe that there's something greater for us? Are, have we gotten a glimpse of the glory that God is willing to share with us? And I think that glimpse is, comes from adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Absolutely. I really mean that. Absolutely. The, the supernatural presence of Christ, it's the greatest thing on the planet, yeah. the Eucharist. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Mary, this is a great story that Cardinal Seurat tells us about another bishop talking about vocations, because the crisis in the church also deals with lack of vocations to the priesthood. Yeah. So what the Cardinal said is, what a sign of faith and trust in God is a clear reaffirmation of the greatness and necessity of priestly celibacy would be. He said, I know a bishop who's in Africa 
who has given the shortage of seminarians in his diocese, announced that he himself would make a foot uh, on foot a once a month pilgrimage to a Marian shrine. He has done this for several years to show how much he believes in the spiritual effect, uh, effect of efficacy of his gesture. Today, his seminary has to be enlarged. See, I think yeah. that's the answer, not, well, just let, let him get married. No. Sacrifice no. is the language of love. Exactly. And it's not it's not going to solve the problem to to allow mir- by the way, the church has never allowed her priests to marry. Priests are not allowed to marry. By the way, in the Anglican Church, priests are not allowed to marry. Only married men are ordained to the priesthood. That's the distinction, yeah. The married and that's it. You it, and, and and yes, in the Eastern rites of the Catholic Church, we do have married men who are ordained to the priesthood, to the not to the not in the monasteries. The monasteries they're celibate, but in the diocesan clergy, you have married men who are ordained to the priesthood. Yep. But but the reality is is that and Saint Paul pointed this out: a married man has to serve God with a divided heart because right. his first concern is for his wife and his children. Of course, marriage is also a sacrament, and he was married first, so that's the first sacrament, and he has that has to be his priority. So what happens? His his congregation has to suffer. He can't always be available to his congregation to hear confessions, to give the sacraments, because he has a wife and a family to serve also. Well said. Cardinal Seurat also addresses the Amazon Senate, because this book was published right after it. And I think he nails it. He said, the inhabitants of the Amazon region have a profound need of priests. Yes, who do not do. limit themselves to doing their work on fixed schedules. Yes. And then go back to their families to take care of their children. Your point exactly. Yeah, exactly. Now, they need we they need men who are passionate about Christ, burning with his fire, consumed by the zeal of souls. Bishop Sheen said our soul our fires have been burned out. Our fires He's, have gone out. Yep. What would I do? He says, "What would I be today?" If missionaries didn't come and live and die in my village in Gehenna. When, wow. he, when he was in Africa as a child, his family was not Catholic. The missionaries yeah. came and brought the good news of Jesus Christ. He says, would I have had this desire to be a priest if they wow. hadn't been so content to ordain one of the men in the village? Has the church grown cold to the point where among her children, there are not enough magnanimous souls to get up and go off? To proclaim Christ in the Amazon region? Boy, that's telling it like it is. Are we being selfish? Do yes. we get the point? Are we being so selfish that, no, I'm not willing to make the sacrifice? It's interesting because in, in many countries, yep. you know, when the Catholic priests, would, Catholic missionaries would first come to the country, mm-hmm. the people didn't know them and they were suspicious of them and yeah. they'd never seen a Catholic. And they're like, oh, well, you're just here to take over our country. No, actually, um, we're here to serve because we're, we're priests. Um, oh, well, then you're here to take our women. Exactly. No, we're not here to take your women because we're celibate. Oh, well, then you're here to take our money. No, actually, we're not here to take I your money. It. We're vowed to poverty. So it's like, oh. I don't get uh, it. What service? Celibacy? Poverty? But then the people saw that oh. it was true. And when the priests lived their celibacy and they lived their poverty and they served the people. And look at the, I mean, look at the lives of the saints. You know, Scott Hahn always pointed this out. He said, you know, so oftentimes Protestants will say, well, look at those Catholics, how they live. And, and, and what would look at, obviously, their teaching can't be true. He said, no, if you want to know the Catholic Church teaching, those who live it to the full are the saints. You have to study the lives of the saints. Right. And there are many saints in our own time, in the 20th century. Pope John Paul II canonized many, and there are many lay people. That's right. And they simply gave themselves to the Lord in service in ordinary life. In ordinary life, just doing the ordinary things, doing the duties of their state in life, but doing everything for the love of God, you know, making sacrifices. Jesus, it's for love of you, for the conversion of sinners in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But being faithful to prayer, being faithful to serving the poor, being faithful to the teachings of the church and keeping the Ten Commandments. And when we break them, that's what confession's for. You got it. You know, Mary, I think people are going to be shocked that the Cardinal uh, quotes uh, Pope uh, John the 23rd back in 1960 pointing about the antiquity about priestly celibacy has been guarded carefully yeah. as one of the purest glories of the Catholic priesthood. Wow. St. John the 23rd declared during the second Senate of the Roman Senate on January 26, 1960, 
I didn't know this until I read this book. I bet you didn't either. He says, we are upset that certain persons would imagine that the Catholic Church would go so far as to renounce deliberately or as a matter of convenience. Do you hear this today? That what was for long centuries and still remains one of the noblest and purest glories of the priesthood, the law of ecclesiastical celibacy, and the concern to make it prevail always recall the battles of heroic times when the Church of Christ has to engage in the struggle, like now, and won the triumph of her glorious you know, teachings. So this is what he said. Now, Pope Paul VI, seven years later, and he's also a saint now, right? right? He said something similar, June 24th, 1967, when we were just kids. <clears throat> he says, hence, we consider that the present law of celibacy should continue to be linked to ecclesiastical ministry. This law should support the minister in his, in his exclusive, definitive, total choice of the unique and supreme love of Christ. It should uphold him in the entire dedication to himself in public worship of God and to the service of the church. It should be distinguished to the state of life, both among the faithful and in the world at large. Now, Mary, I could go on to the Ecumenical Council of Vatican II's decree, pointing this out, the same thing. I can go on to Pope Paul VI after the council saying the same thing. John, uh, Pope John Paul II, the second, Benedict. Uh, it's all there. And I think the bottom line is the church is in great need of saints right now. Exactly. And I think the, the, uh, the whole renunciation of being married and becoming a priest, you're married to the church. You're married to Christ. Right, right. And I think that that example is very um, edifying for not just Catholics, but for people who aren't Catholic, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. And it gets, you know, it's funny because in the Eastern rites of the Catholic Church, where they do ordain married men to the priesthood, they told the church, the Western church, at the time that this yep. question was being considered oh, back yeah. in the 19, late 70s and the early 1980s, yep. don't do it. <laughs> our people won't go to confession to our diocesan Very clergy. Very practical reason. Because they don't believe that a married man can keep the secret, could keep the seal of the confessional. And so they won't go to the married, the men, the married men who've been ordained to the priesthood they don't hear as many confessions because people won't go to them. So it, it, it creates this difficulty when we understand how marriage is and, and how it is between husbands and wives. And the people can't believe that. The, but but you, you go to a, a celibate priest and he's sealed. And it's amazing. Even non-Catholics will go to a celibate priest and ask him for advice and about things that he wouldn't talk to anyone else about. So, yeah, it's a real witness. It's a witness to the reality of we don't have a finality in this world. We were made for heaven in union with God. Well said. Chapter 3 is titled by Cardinal Seurat, The Crisis in the Church. We're going to talk about Scripture. That's right up your alley, Mary Danielle, with the Bible with the Barbers on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what the Cardinal has said about how we've lost the sense of the sacredness of Scripture. Wow. We'll be back after a quick break. You're listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. This is Matthew Arnold for Virgin Most Powerful Radio. This March, VMPR, in association with the Catholic Resource Center, will be hosting a special conference for the Adoramus Society. Adoramus at the Triduum, a conference on the spirituality of the Triduum liturgies, featuring Father Joseph Fessio, Dr. Anthony Lillis, and Christopher Karstens, addressing such topics as developing a liturgical spirituality, the spirituality of Holy Thursday, the spirituality of Good Friday, and the spirituality of the Paschal Vigil and Easter season. It all takes place March 14th, 2020 at the historic Sacred Heart Chapel at 381 West Center Street, Covina, California, 91723. You can register online at vmpr.org or call now 877-526-2151 to reserve your seat today for Adoramus at the Triduum.
Sirach 11.24 says, Do not say, I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart and realize that we depend on Him for everything. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. <laughs> Welcome back. Actually, Mary Danielle's filling in for Jess on Friday. Matt Arnold's show's coming up. Uh, the bar, not the bar, the uh, <laughs> happy hour. Happy hour, excuse happy, me. Happy, 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 happy hour <laughs> with Matt Arnold coming up after our show. Um, I want to say that when I read the Robert Cardinal Soros book, The Day Is Now Far Spent, you know what it made me realize? I'm not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, because he's saying so many things that, you know, we have talks about at night, uh, Mary, about what's going on in the church. And he says about the crisis in the church, his experience, he says it's a deep it's a very deep uh, crisis. He said it's like a cancer eating away at the body from within. It, many theologians, you know, have talked about this. He said that uh, for them, however, the only standard by which to measure the church is the expediency for which it functions. In other words, they're looking at the church and saying, you know, are we, uh, you know, wh- where's our crisis going to come from? He says the cardinal says the loss of this way of looking at the church in faith causes all the symptoms of secularization. Right. Because the church right. becomes it's like another corporation. Exactly. And that's wrong. It's just a human institution. Yeah. And he said prayer, Mary, you've said this, and that's why I say, he said prayer is eating, is eating away by activism. So in other words, we're replacing uh, prayer by going out and starting committees. It's like what Bishop Sheen <laughs> said. We've got too many go-go's and not enough come comes Exactly. He says true charity turns into humanistic solidarity. What? No. The liturgy is handed over to desecularization. <clears throat> Theology is transformed into politics. Yeah. And the very idea of the priesthood comes into crisis. Right. He said this secularization is a terrible phenomenon. How can it be defined? Well, he says we read in Scripture as a prof- and people do this, Mary. Now, you're the Scripture scholar. Uh, he said this, and I think this relates right to what you've said on Bible with the Barbers said we're reading scripture as a profane book and not as God's inspired world. We organize the liturgy as a spectacle and not as a mystical renewal of the sacrifice of the cross. We have come to the point where priests and consecrated religious live in a way that is sheer in worldliness. Soon Christians themselves will live as though God did not exist. I want to back up on that sentence. He said that, we read the word of God, right, mm-hmm. as just a profound book and not as God's inspired wor- word. Mary, I, st- I think we stole something later that the Protestants found out was wrong. Could you share with us? The Protestants kind of had that same problem hundreds of years ago, right? Right. Once they rejected the authority of the church as the source of the scriptures, right. which the, the scriptures came out of the church, mm-hmm. it was the church who told us what was scripture because the church has the authority to do that. Then then they found themselves questioning everything in scripture and looking at it as if it was just another um, piece of literature that men had put together. And you lose the sense of the inerrancy 
and inspiration. And the Protestants figured out long about, you know, some of them at least, along about the mid-1800s, that this is not good. Nope. You know, that some of this, we're, we're treating it just as if it was a human document, and as a consequence, we're losing our faith. Yep. Well, the church teaches us that Scripture is truly the Word of God in written words. Mm-hmm. You know, the Word of God is first and foremost Jesus Christ, the second person, excuse me, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Word, the Son of God from all eternity. But but then the Word became flesh. And so he, human words tell us about God. And God inspired inspired certain people so that the church teaches us that the Holy Spirit is the primary author of Scripture yep. and that there are no errors in Scripture because God can't lie. So there are no historical, scientific, no, none. There are no errors. And yes, when there appear to be errors or contradictions, it's because we either have a bad copy because it's only the original text mm-hmm. that God inspired that, that is guaranteed to be inerrant. So... We either have a bad copy, a bad translation, or perhaps, maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's something I don't understand. Mm. You mean God might be beyond my capacity to fill in, put in, you know, categorize and put into my little head? Oh, oh, what a a novel idea. And so the, the church has always insisted the scriptures are God's word. And how many times in my studies I've heard, oh, you know, well, we look at the ancient Near Eastern writings and we look at the, the uh, myths of the pagans and we look at the, um, you know, the, 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 the legends and all these things. And we see so many similarities between scripture. Ah, ah, you might see so many similarities. Yes, because because the authors of scripture acted as true human authors. But ah, where is the difference? Where is the difference? God himself is the primary author of scripture. It is God who inspired men and he worked in them in such manner that they committed to writing. And this is Vatican II, direct quote. Mm -hmm. They committed to writing that which God intended and nothing more. That's an important statement. If you want to hear more on the Bible with the barbers, which is another show for Virgin Most Powerful, it's on Tuesday after the Terry and Jesse show. You can listen to all the podcasts but what Mary does is tries to teach us the fundamentals of the Bible. We go through different books of the Bible. Many times people say, I don't have a Bible study at my parish. Well, well you now have one on the Internet or on the radio. You can listen to us. And uh, I think you'll learn a lot about the fundamentals of the faith. But remember, today, Friday, is First Friday. I just want to re- review what we talked about at the beginning of the show yeah. about penance, yep. about prayer, Amen. Visit the sick, go out and uh, make a, a sacrifice for today because, again, this is First Friday. I have devotion to the Sacred Heart. Uh, I tie it into what we talk about every day here at the Terry and Jesse Show about the five stones of David. Now, for those who know the story, is it Chronicles, right, where King David uh, is, here he is, a little guy with five stones, and he, and he, and he flings him with a slingshot and knocks over uh, David, who's a huge Goliath. Uh, Goliath, I'm sorry, who's huge Goliath, and what did he use? Five smooth stones. Well, well, how are we going to fight what we would call even modernism, secularism, all these communism, all these things that undermine Jesus Christ and His bride, the Church? How do we do it through our prayer life? Amen. And so the first Union one with God is go to confession. Amen. And we would say that going to confession at least once a month. Is a is a is is essential to keeping a spiritual life, and that's not something that Terry and Jesse made up. Okay, no, no. Pope John Paul II was constantly telling people go to confession frequently, and finally someone said, "What is frequent confession, Holy right. Father?" And he said, "At least once a month." And not only him, Saint uh, Padre Pio said the exact same thing, and I will say soon to be beatified Fulton Sheen said the same thing also. Yeah. So once a month confession. Uh, I would say go to Mass as often as possible, especially if you're retired. Go to daily Mass. It's the greatest prayer that we have. Padre Peel said, you know, the, wor- the world could exist more without the sun than the Mass. More easily without the sun than what? the Holy so Sacrifice tells you of the Mass. Think so, about that one. And when we really understand the Mass, it's just good, t- good time management to go there. Also, the Rosary. Remember, Our Lady of Fatima's peace plan was integrally tied in to the Rosary. And what did Our Lady say at Fatima? Souls are going to hell because no one is there to pray and make sacrifices for them. 
This is the perfect day, first Friday, to make a sacrifice. Do you have a son? Do you have a daughter? Do you have a relative, a husband who needs prayers? We all need prayers. We all need all prayers. Need prayers. <laughs> so get that rosary out every day. Now, one thing that we've been talking about reading the Bible, we're talking about people who don't read the Bible with as it becoming as it comes from God, as the inspired word of God. Open your Bible every day, and I would encourage you to have a catechism alongside your Bible. Yeah, it would help. And the reason is, is that read a paragraph or two each day, yeah. and, and sh- because you're not going to make it if you're a low-information Catholic. Right. Think about the statistics, Mary, right now. Anybody, young man, young woman, by the time they're 23 years of age, 82% of them aren't practicing the faith. Right. Now, why is that? They don't know it, first Exactly. Of all. They haven't studied it. So I would encourage you, this is my take, too, about I'm going to be keep pushing Bishop Sheen. Get Bishop Sheen's Life is Worth Living. 50 yeah, half-hour yeah. shows. It's his convert course. Yeah. Give it away. I just sent it to a priest at EWTN today. Yeah, good. He, I said, you know that? I said, Father, this would be great for your homilies. If you want to get a copy, just call me. I'll take, I mean, giving you my cell number. Six six one nine seven two seven eight seven two because I want you to have a great formation because your formation is critical Absolutely. in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Absolutely, Mary. Uh, wrapping up this idea on Scripture, we have a couple minutes. When you talk on the Bible with the barbers, when we, what are people going to get when they listen to the, Bi- the the show on the Bible with the barbers? In other words, what are you going to show them? The, what the Bible can do in their personal life. That's my question. Well, we want to understand the scriptures. Christ, God is speaking directly to us in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. It's not just, this isn't a book that was written, you know, 2000 years ago. And in the old Testament, how many, you know, three, yeah. 4,000 years ago, all these books were written and they have no meaning. No, it's God speaking to me right now in the present moment. And he's in trying to inform me how I am to live my life right now today in such a manner that I will live in union with him. Mm-hmm. And that's God made us for union with himself. Yeah. And by the way, um, you know, every word of scripture speaks to us of Jesus Christ. So ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. From the first word of Genesis to the last word of the book of Revelation, it all speaks to us of Christ because it's the revelation of God about how he would save his people. He made us for union with him. Man turned away from him and sinned, and God promised a Messiah. And it's all about how God prepares his people, and, and, and God still does that today. He's still working with us and in our lives. And so we want to know, how does this scripture passage apply to us today? What is it saying to us about the times we live in? What is it saying to us about our response? How should we be responding? And I think also your show will also help people fall deeper in love with Jesus by giving their lives to Christ, by making a commitment to reading the Bible. Because the Bible can transform your life. And if you need a little help, join us every Tuesday. Go to the podcast, The Bible with the Barbers on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I also want to make a little thank you for everybody. We, we've, uh, we're we going to be coming up on our second anniversary for Virgin Most Powerful in January, just a couple weeks from now. Wow. And we couldn't do it without you. Amen. So thank you so much. If you would like support. to be a monthly donor, call us, 877-526-2151. And if you want to make a one-time year-end donation, call me, 661 661- Nine seven two seven eight seven two, and I'll be happy to thank you for that. Mary Danielle, what state should we be living in? The state of grace. And what state shouldn't we be living in? The state of mortal sin. And go ahead. You can always say that prayer of Joan of Arc. Lord, if I am not in the state of grace, put me there. <laughs> and if I'm in the state of grace, keep me there. Amen. That's well said. And again, if it's been a long time since you've been to confession and you're Go waiting for confession. someone, my wife will tell you. She does Go that. to confession. She does that to me too, folks. <laughs> hey, it's been great having you here at the, the show, the Terry and Jesse show. Jesse will be back. Up next, Matt Arnold with the um, happy, happy hour. hour. And I think you're going to learn a lot about a lot of things about the mass. That's what I heard. It's going to be a great show. So join us. Don't turn that dial. We'll be back with another show. And again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing us to come into your home or your office. God love you. All right, my love. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests 
so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O Divine and Great High Priest, may the power of Thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of Thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For Thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.